Okay, guys. So the I got the exhaust put on today, uh, the back portion. Um, it went pretty good. Um, sometimes these exhaust shops, man, uh, if you get anything outside of the norm, man, they they act like you're asking them to have their firstborn, whether they're male or female. But anyway, I got it put on. Uh, the tips that I wanted on there, for some reason he said that, uh, and these tips did come with uh, inlets that had like a clamp with a bolt on it, but I didn't want that. I wanted them welded. So I don't know if it's because they're painted or what, but he's, this guy was really a unique individual. So uh, he said something about it, but um, I'm going to talk to my other guy. And uh, I think as long as you grind away the paint, it'll give you a weldable surface. It's metal. So... Um, but anyway, so I still need to get the tips on, but I'm going to show you real quick what they did just from the ground. Um, I started to show you guys how the piping for the for the uh, cold and hot side was today. But again, this guy was uh, kind of out there. So I'm going to show you the um, exhaust from the back without the tips on it as best I can from the ground. Okay, so what it is, of course, I told you without the resonators on here it's really loud and so i wanted to put the resonators before um the turbo as opposed to after because i like the noise obviously like i've mentioned in past videos uh, it has quieted that noise down some and i did have to put them back here because uh, i just don't have the room in between the cold side and the um uh, exhaust down the center tunnel so i had to put them back here so as you can see, my I've come out with a Y here. And of course, on the back side of that Y over to the turbo, you can't see it here, but uh, it's got a V-band clamp. So this can be lowered and raised if I want to. Um, but anyway, he got it pretty straight. Um, got the resonators on here. These are some Natami two and a quarter inch ID um, in and out. And then, of course, he, he just hung it back here with the little uh, outlet pipe here. So I need to take it somewhere and get the tips on. But I have this temporarily put on here just because I needed to know where to put the tips at. So this will be coming off later when I do the paint. But it had to be on here now so I knew where to put the tips at, centered, and as far as how far out they stuck out. Uh, but outside of that, again, once I get it up on the rack, I'll be able to show you guys how, how I ratted all the piping and stuff. But that's the, so far, that's what, that's what it is. I'll get a back shot from the ground. So just as a, as a bottom shot here, if you look down, and I'll try to get a little bit closer. Uh, you see the, the two outlets right there. So it's really not any lower, uh, well, it is lower obviously, but uh, it's not so much lower that it would really give me pause not to run it on the street. It really does butt up against the uh, trunk cavity there. Um, of course, like I said, we're gonna be taking it down um, and wrapping it and then applying that black spray uh, sealant on it because it is underneath here and I wanna try to seal it up as good as I can uh, from uh, weather. It is stainless steel. So that's going to help from corrosion and stuff like that as well. But I got one more thing. I got to put on a bung um, on the front for the rear O2 sensor. And of course, the uh, it's the uh, Fowler. I'm using a Fowler there because, uh, well, of course I'm running a cat converter. Of course I am. But anyway, I'm putting that Fowler there in case my cat converter ever fails. Uh, I'll be able to uh, pass inspection. But anyway, so that's the tips coming out. Evenly placed. Uh, you can't really see them. When, once the tips are on there, we'll end up, it'll be able to be seen better. And as I noted in the past videos, um, I had to ultimately buy two new amps. The first one here on the left is powering the front and rear speakers. And I've got the wires quote unquote managed right now until I get them permanently set in here. Of course they're going to go on the back of the um, seats and so I got them kind of like just uh, velcroed here so they don't slide around when I'm driving uh, and then once they're back up on the back of the rear seats then all this wiring here starts to make sense and how I've got it rigged this is one of those base boosters 
I don't know. I'm probably not even going to use it. Um, so anyway, uh, that's the smaller amp that's powering just the subwoofer here. And then this one's powering both front and rear speakers. I'm still having an issue with the left front. It's coming in and out. And whenever I like bang on the dash, it comes in. So there must be something behind the radio. I've got to get back in there in any way to hook up the dimmer so that the uh, home... You know, sometimes I can't see it because that display is bright enough to where you I put your hand over it to reflect the light onto the button to see it. So um, I love it, though. I love that screen. Like I said, I just hope it lasts. Uh, so anyway, uh, of course, this thing booms. It'll, for me, it kind of makes me kind of dizzy when the bass is hitting. Now, that's just admitting that I'm 52 and my, sy my system can't take those kinds of hits. Uh, but anyway, it's not a very loud system, I'm sure, to most people. Uh, it's starting to get windy here. The rain's blowing in. I've got both garage doors open. but So I was able to get these black set screws. They don't stick out as much as the silver ones do, but they still stick out. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to find it. But the black decentuates them so you don't really look at them straight away uh this thing i took it for today when we went to the exhaust shop i, I love the way it feels i mean it's the handle it's everything and maybe greasing that ball helped out quite a bit made it feel a lot different uh i'd recommend you do that it's not too difficult to do you take this off and then this whole boot section comes off and underneath there you've got clear access to the ball just shoot some grease down inside there and lube it up uh, but it, it shifts great. Uh, it's like butter. As, well, as good as a Saturn shift can be. Um, this thing, this uh, bezel here, man, it broke into three spots, uh, three chunks. I ended up having to get some model glue, and I did salvage it, but um, I'm not sure light's going to shine through here anymore. But uh, I thought about if I didn't do that, what could I put there in its place? I don't know, maybe a black O-ring or something would have done the trick. I'm not sure. With this getting, I don't use it for cigarette lighter uh, as far as lighting cigarettes. I will probably use it in addition to add another USB to it. I don't know if these get hot or not. Uh, I'm not sure. But um, I'll use this as an extra USB port. Um, of course, I do have um, these already. This is the Android car, uh, Play Here's the another USB for it. Like I said, I'm not sure I even need the USB for the CarPlay. Um, so yeah. So one thing I wanted to note, getting back on the mechanical side of things, um, two things. If you've seen this in past videos, this is just one of those battery savers. You you basically hook your cable up to it, and when you're not using your car, you just unscrew it and it kills the connection so it doesn't keep the battery. It, it saves your battery uh, from draining down so much. If you have a car that you rarely drive, uh, it's easy to install and it will save your battery. Problem is, whenever, you know, when you disconnect the battery, you reset your monitors, your fuel monitors and everything. So your car has to go through that kind of learn process again. So just be mindful of that. Um, this is the Bedgy regulator, and when I took it for the test drive today, I, I don't know if I told you guys, but before when I was getting on it, just a little bit when I was driving it, way too much fuel. And so two adjustments for this regulator. This is your, uh, your, uh, your um, ratio adjustment knob. This is your onset of gain. I needed, I needed this when I ran that small turbo because boost came on so quick. Uh, a lot of times before the throttle can tell the computer to add fuel we've been over this before that's how i had my infamous three psi blow but um so anyway i don't so much need this now because boost comes on so late so what i found today um well what i decided to do was Beji, the guys who make this sell these but uh, they're restrictors and inside here where that little white paint mark is there's a hard peel i think it's like 35 or 30 thousandths hole through there and what it does is it just basically drops the amount of vacuum that can get to this so that it can't add too much fuel too quickly and so that's what I did and I took it to the exhaust shop down the way back I got on it and I noticed as I got higher up in the RPM range uh, it started to get up to the uh, high 11s even a 12 and so I want to add fuel to that so I'll come over here now because now I couldn't do it before without that peel 
now I need to add fuel so I'll come over here and adjust this it's all the way out right now no, I say it's not all the way out um, I can open it some more um, but anyway so that that's one that's one small change I made mechanically um, so next up I'm gonna get to my old shop have them inspect it then register it it's already insured but it's been out since 17 <laughs> So I got to get it over there and get it uh, inspected so I can register it. Outside of that, next up, mechanically, I just got to get um, play with this fuel a little bit so I can confidently get on it. Um, when I get back from getting it registered, uh, inspected and registered, I'm going to drop that exhaust down and I'm going to wrap it and then spray it with that sealer. Get that taken care of so I can have the confidence that heat isn't leaching into the cold side. And back where I've got the heat resistant uh, foil for on the gas tank, man, I can't tell you how often I think about that. I don't want to be sitting at a gas tank and then go boom, or I got up at a, at a stoplight and then blow up because my gas tank, you know, gets overheated. I, I honestly, it, I, I just have a problem putting my confidence in what people say about their products these days. So it says it can resist that heat times two, and it is in the back. Um, but you never know. I want to be extra safe. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap that whole system. And then I'm going to adjust and play with the cold side. It's a little too close to the exhaust I saw today. And it's only because the piping is tweaked. I just got to tweak it a little bit, play with the little hangers I got on the cold side, and it'll be fine. Um, after that, at that point, I'll take it out, drive it as much as I can, figure out the fuel, say, okay, we're good, put some real mileage on here. And then I want to bring it down for the unit chip. Okay, so we're going to get that going. Um, just time. Also got to charge the AC. I replaced everything except the evaporator core this time around. So I've got it disconnected now so I don't accidentally engage it. But I need to put some Freon in here so I can have some AC. The power steering pump, I got that leak fixed. Took care of that. I got power steering, thank goodness. Um, so yeah, um, coming along.